judging of the jumping is influenced by its difficulty, and its final performance by Paul Luxon will decide whether we shall be looking at the new world champion. There isn't a sound in the arena here at Stuttgart as Luxon prepares himself. To maintain his leading position, he has to perform his extraordinary routine again without fault. And he's away. He's done it! He must have done it! Yes, he knows he's done it! We are indeed looking at the new world champion. This is the first time in the history of the sport that a European has taken the title from the United States. Trampolining has been my life. I suppose you could say I've given everything to it. I started when I was nine, when I met Brian at a small gymnastic club in North London. I gave every minute of my spare time to it. At 13, I won my first competition. But after that, I didn't win another for some years. I remember that from the age of about 14, trampolining moulded my life. There have been for me, as well as other performers, the thrill of learning new moves, the frustration, fighting with the fear of trying some of them for the first time, getting to grips with yourself, and finding out things about oneself. Paul Luxon and his coach, Brian Moore, are both from London. The making of a world champion anywhere is a rare event. When it happens, the circumstances are always interesting. Trampolining is allied to gymnastics and springboard diving. The Russians and Japanese have dominated world gymnastics, just as the Americans have always excelled internationally in diving and trampolining. The emergence of a British athlete in one of these events, with the ability to challenge successfully the best in the world, is strange indeed, simply because Britain, unlike countries who identify sporting success with national prestige, has never equipped itself for the task. It takes performers like Paul Luxon thousands of hours of dogged, repetitive practice to perfect his movements. The art is to be able to land each skill with such precision that one is able to immediately rise into another movement of equal complexity. The movements are roughly grouped into six categories. Single somersaults, double somersaults and triple somersaults, all of which can be done in three body shapes. The tucked position, where the body is wrapped in a tight ball, the pike or jackknife position and the straight position. The fourth category is that of the twisting somersaults, where up to four twists are incorporated. The fifth and sixth categories are double and triple somersaults that incorporate twists. Here is a comparatively easy sequence or routine for someone of Paul Luxon's ability. There are ten movements in any competitive routine. A double forward somersault with a half twist in the second somersault, followed by a back somersault straight, a forward somersault with one and a half twists, 
This is a backward somersault in the pike position. Here we have a movement taken from the diving boards, a three-quarter backward somersault, followed by a somersault in the tucked position from the stomach. This movement is a front somersault with a half twist. This is a backward somersault with a full twist. He finishes with very nearly a double somersault to his back. Technically, it is one and three-quarter somersaults. And then does a forward somersault from his back with a half twist. A trampoline sequence is judged on how high a performer can get, how accurately he can stay in the centre of the trampoline, and how aesthetically pleasing he can make his performance. A mark for difficulty is added afterwards. A slight miscalculation can result in having to abandon an intended skill halfway through the flight, and a very quick escape route has to be found to avoid a bad landing. Here is the move again, a twisting somersault from the stomach, this time performed accurately. We see beautiful movement, but the performer sees only chaos. Out of this chaos, he has to feel and grope his way towards perfect movement. Executing the movement is simply not enough. The performer needs to do more than just go through the motions, as each skill has to communicate something. One expert wrote a book entitled Two Seconds of Freedom. That is the time in the air of each movement. Two seconds in which to create a thing of beauty that is then immediately lost from sight. More than this, the performer never actually sees the thing he is creating at the time he is doing it. He only feels it and relies on others to draw out of him what is within him. Winning a world championship has occupied them continually for five years. Since leaving school, Paul has been, voluntarily, without a job for long periods in order to gain experience abroad, representing both his country and the British Trampoline Federation. His coach has spent thousands of hours in the gymnasium watching and criticising. Every stage of Paul's development leading to the World Championship has been carefully thought out and planned by Brian who gained a great deal of his knowledge from a year he spent in California with some of the finest trampolinists in the world. The majority of schools and youth organizations in Europe and in America use the trampoline, if not competitively, then as an important part of recreation and physical education. George Nissen, a former American springboard diver and tumbling champion, started it all in the United States soon after the war, and Ted Blake did the same in Britain, and later organized the first world championship in 1964. He also founded the British Trampoline Federation, the official governing body of the sport in Great Britain. The history of trampolining is lost in antiquity. They were used in circuses and music halls by some very accomplished performers 50 years ago and more. Before the folding trampoline was invented, music hall managers would not allow trampoline acts to rehearse in the theatre. They called them stage wreckers. Too many wires and cables were needed to support the frame. So much time was needed to put up the equipment between the acts that the continuity of the show was threatened. Today, a trampoline folds up flat and can be moved in seconds.
Transwinists have modified many well-established dives by landing on the back or the chest and stomach, because there are obviously no head-first landings in this sport. Olympic diver John Baker demonstrates with Paul Luxon that there is a generic link between many skills on the trampoline and the springboard. The forward dive straight becomes this on the trampoline, the crash dive. The back dive straight on the boards has been modified to this movement on the trampoline. Similarly, the one and a half somersault pike becomes this movement on the trampoline bed. and the two and a half somersaults from the springboard has been adapted by trampolinists to a landing on the back, followed, in this case, by another double somersault from the back. Here is part of the winning routine of Rob Hughes and Paul Luxon, who were the British team that won the World Synchronised Trampoline Championship. As well as having to make accurate adjustments in their own individual skills, they also have to adjust to each other while in flight. National synchronised champion David Pitaway, working here with Paul, has achieved near perfection in this event. Twelve years I've been jumping. I worked at it every day for three solid hours, and Brian would analyse and criticise every move I make, pushing me on towards a perfection we both know we will never quite reach. Imagine waking up one morning and losing almost everything you have ever worked for. It's happened to us. I've walked into a gymnasium and find I've lost almost every move I thought I'd mastered. The mental patterns have just been wiped from my brain. Then we start all over again. I feel like an absolute beginner. It's like learning to walk again. I am occasionally asked if it ever gets boring. For this constant battle for perfection, either relearning skills I've lost or learning new skills never enables me to get bored.
we shall now see many combinations of using double and triple somersaults with any number of twists. Some of them are simple to identify and others are too complicated to be appreciated at first sight. Here we have a triple somersault with a twist in the third somersault. This somersault and this twisting somersault are combined to make this double somersault incorporating a full twist. A single backward somersault with three full twists. This is a double somersault with one and a half twists in the second somersault. Here is a double twisting double somersault with twists in both somersaults. Paul Luxon is an artist. This implies exploring and sharing things beyond normal everyday experience, getting on the inside of a deeper experience. People who have first completely and laboriously mastered the mechanical skills and techniques of their medium, as Paul Luxon and Brian Moore have done, whether it is in paint, sound or movement, are then on the verge of proceeding into art. But that is one reason that Brian Moore dislikes being called the trainer. This implies only knowledge of skill or technique. Both are important. But the real work, they feel, has been for both of them on the level of aesthetic achievement. And the thing they work with, their medium, is this unusual and exciting kind of human movement. 